that. Or the, the risk of embarrassment is almost always necessary to receive breakthrough. The risk of embarrassment. Now, I did not please him. That, that God, is, God is not in the business of embarrassing us. That is never his goal. That is never his intent unless you fail to humble yourself. Right. Now, now, boy, we could go to, uh, oh, Lord, help me, where's the passage? Uh, Daniel, I believe it's chapter 3 with Nebuchadnezzar. Y'all remember him? Mm -hmm. And how prideful he was. And he was prideful to the degree that he built this, this golden statue of himself. And got the band together and said, you know, y'all play. And the, the edict was, when you hear the music, you bow to me. Because the statue was literally intended to be the personification of him. And so you hear the music, bow to me. Bow to me. And the, the three Hebrew boys, y'all remember them. They refused to bow. And... Uh, they really had found favor with the king. And he said, I'm going to give you another chance. Anybody who give you another chance, I'm going to give him another chance. That's favor. And they said, you give us a thousand and one chances. We're not bowing down. And he said, listen, the music is going to play. And if you don't bow down, the edict says that you have to go to the, to the furnace, to the fiery furnace. And they don't bow. Music plays. They don't bow. They heat the furnace. Y'all know the story. Everybody know the story? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's just let's give you a short version. They heat it seven times hotter. It's so hot. Listen to this. Let, 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 look at how fascinating scripture is. It's so hot. They heat it up. It's so hot until the men who throw them in get consumed. But they don't. The guys who were inserting them into the fire were consumed by the fire, yet they were not. And they're in the fire, and, and, and the king looks in and says, hey. King James said, did we not? <laughs> it, wasn't it three? Well, why do I see four? And let me tell you, let me tell you Nebuchadnezzar's experience with God. He says, not only do I see four, but he told us what the fourth man looked like. With your prideful self, with your arrogant self, you can't tell me you haven't had an experience with God to know something about his personhood and still you act the way you act. Boy, you're preaching in here. Are you getting this? He said the fourth, the fourth guy, he looks like And God said, okay, let me, I don't even want to say humble. I, I prefer the word humiliate. Let me humiliate you. Because the command of the word is that we humble ourselves. Oh, that's the word. We humble ourselves. We humble ourselves. And God has resisted from the proud. That's the scripture, right? He resists the proud, but gives grace to who? And Nebuchadnezzar was brought low. Seven years. He crawled around in the front yard like a beast. Fingernails grew out like claws, nipping at grass and eating grubs for all to see. The scripture said that when, 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 when God released him and the mist lifted from his head, he made a proclamation that God was, in fact, God. One of the things I don't want to do is put God in a position where he has to bring me to my knees. The risk of embarrassment. It's a risk. It's a risk. It's not, you have to be embarrassed to get your breakthrough. And I don't think it, you know, 
for the men here on Father's Day, let me just ask, how, how many men here enjoy being embarrassed? I'm really not looking, I don't care, because I know there ain't a man. I know pretty much all these men, and I know they are not going to raise their hand. Not in agreement to that question, right? That's not cool, right, Mike? We, no. We, no. No. I um, had an incident the other day. And I'm really pretty easy going, but somebody just really, really spoke to me out of pocket. And um, it was one of those situations where I knew that if I didn't address it, it was just going to get worse the next time. Anybody kind of know what I'm talking about? You ever had it? And you know, you, we teach people how to treat us yeah. based on what we tolerate from them. It's true. You're, you're always teaching. You're always teaching. And so, and I, and I just, it wasn't a lot of east side in it. Can I just say that? It wasn't a lot of east side. It wasn't a lot of North Buffalo either, though. I got to deal with that. <laughs> but um, you know, I said, "Hey, nah, I'm not. So I'm not that dude. You know, uh, you can't talk to me that way." I said, "If that's the only way you know to talk, then we don't have anything to say to each other. But you cannot." speak to me that way. Do you understand? You know, and they're looking at me. And I said, no, 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 no. Do you understand? Because without an understanding, we're going to have a repeat of the same. Y'all ain't saying amen. amen. And, um, and Eastside Billy wouldn't let it go. Pastor Bill was saying, no, nah, just walk away. But Eastside Billy, <laughs> Y'all, everybody got an east side building. And so three times I asked, did you understand? Because it just wasn't going to be healthy. It wasn't going to be good for us, relationally, to have to visit that again. Right. Do you understand? We good? Yeah. And it, and it, you know, it wasn't even like it was an embarrassing type situation. It was just myself and this person, but if you give license to it in private, it'll quickly right. move to the public venue. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm really, yes. I'm sharing some stuff. I hope you're picking up on this. Yeah. Oh. It's like when you, you know, like when people bring their kids out in public and the kids stand on their head and spin like a top and do whatever and whatever and whatever. Why do they do that in public? Because that's the behavior in private. Right? Yeah. We were talking up then, and, and Pastor Todd was sharing with some of the guys that, you know, how it takes the boys for a walk and that kind of thing. And um, he says, if I, if I call their name, yell their name, and they don't stop, when I get to them, they get a swat on the bottom. And, uh, and he said, here's the reason why. Because if we're walking and they run out in the street and they hear me yell and they don't stop, it could be a matter of life and death. Do you understand? So, it wasn't even an issue of being embarrassed. We just try to set a tone. This is who I am when it's just you and I, and I'm the same guy when we in a full room. You, you can't be out of pocket, because I'm not out of pocket with you. Right? right. So, we talk about embarrassment. It's not about God doing something out of character, or exposing us, or, 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 or uh, opening, opening us up in some kind of way to ridicule. The risk of embarrassment is really saying, I need what I need from God so badly until I don't care how you perceive me. I don't care what I look like to you, I need what I need from God. We sing a song, old school song. We don't hardly hear a song anymore. You got to go on YouTube and find somebody older than 60 who even sings the song, but it says, I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour, 
I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come. That's old school. We used to get my grandfather here. I need his voice to be there. Yo. Y'all yeah, quit laughing at my grandfather. Now, I know you're laughing at my invitation of my grandfather. But he'd get up and sing that song, and he'd just keep singing it, and his bottom lip go to quivering and shake it. And I'm like, oh, boy, we're going in now. We're going in now. Because it's not about me. It's not about your hand on me. It's not even about the anointing, the aspect of you that I carry in and upon my life. I, I'm wretched and I'm undone. And without you, I'm nothing. I need you. I need you. And I don't care who laughs at my singing. And I don't care who misunderstands my heart uh, when I cry out to you that I need you. None of that matters to me. It's the risk of embarrassment. I don't care. It's, I don't care. I've moved beyond this, and I'm here. And after I handle this, trust me, I'll be better here. Yeah. Abraham risked embarrassment to receive breakthrough. We talk all the time about Abraham planting a tree. I, I wish that you would do a study on the tamarisk tree. I wish you would do a study on what that means for a nomad, a nomad, a tent dweller, somebody who moved and lived from place to place to plant a tree. The implication is such a small, innocuous statement in scripture, but the implications of it and the ramifications of it are huge. It's beyond, it, it just blows your mind when you think about what Abraham did. He planted a tree. And good Lord, unless it's a cactus, who plants a tree in the desert? Right. Don't forget where he was. Against all odds. And then the implication of seeing a tree to travelers in the desert. A tree in the desert was a calling card to people traveling in the desert. It represented shelter. If it's a tree and it's green, it's some water somewhere in the desert. Are you here? And it's said to travelers, come in here and take a rest. Planted it. But I think I said last week, you don't plant a tree for you. You plant a tree for the generations coming behind you. You plant a tree for those coming behind you. And remember, God said, this is the land I'm going to give you. I'm not going to give you a deed. You are, not going to, you are not going to physically take possession of it, Abraham, but it's yours. And you prove to me that you believe me by walking up and down in the length and the breadth of the land. And Abraham took it one step further and planted a tree. I'm going to walk up and down in it, but just to let you know, God, I believe you, boom, I'm planting a tree. And my sons, and my grandsons, and my great-grandsons, and my great-great-grandsons will say, this is the tree that my father Abraham planted. In the middle of a desert, he risked embarrassment to receive breakthrough. And your breakthrough is never just about you. It's about those who come after you. Amen. One of the reasons we never get breakthrough is because we make it just about us. In my closing, you understand, right? You get this? You, 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 we think too closed in about breakthrough. It's never just about you. Next chapter, Genesis 22. God says, well done, Abraham. Well done. I applaud you. You're planting a tree and it's growing too. You go in and you're fetching water and everything else. And it, this is good. And, and God says, oh, by the way, take your son. Your only son. The one you love. Those three things he says that take thy son, thy only son, the son that you love. And I want you to offer him up. In the Bible, yeah, I, I love the way it reads. It just reads, Abraham, I got up next morning, get gathered up everything, got eyes, he got the, 
got the service together. The scripture don't tell you the conversation that he had to have with Sarah. Right. Taking that boy out of this house. Right. Yikes. You can't tell me that Matthew can pack all them kids, not all them kids, not like they got a lot of kids, but them little kids, you gonna pack them up in the, in the car and go out and don't they say nothing to Joel and Joel don't ask. And he the daddy. Say he the daddy of all of them. Ain't no other baby daddy running around. Y'all know how we, you know, this child live in my house, but I can't go on vacation until I get permission from y'all. go skinny, y'all. It's so convoluted. I don't know why we make our lives that. But anyway, that's not what I'm talking about. That's for next, next year's men's day. <laughs> I don't believe I went there. Help me, Jesus. Okay? Joel's going to ask some questions. We had, um, last week, two weeks ago, I don't know, we seem to have them a lot. Help me. We, but we have both boys. And um, Tony had one in the yard. I took one. Might have been little Will or something or Corey on a scooter, and we and we walked down and we've been so look y'all. I'm, I'm a grown man. Say grown man. Grown man. And so we going out the gate. And Tony said, "Where y'all going?" I'm like, I said, she must be talking to you, fella. <laughs> but she said, where y'all going? What? I ain't sat on no donkey. I ain't took provisions for a trip. Nothing like that. We just walking in the driveway. Where y'all going? You think Abraham scooped up Isaac, some servants, some provisions, sat on the donkey, and got out of there, and Sarah ain't say nothing? What woman in this room would let your husband or anybody else scoop up your baby? And, and his, historically, Isaac's probably, you know, anywhere from 17, some say as old as 30 years old, whatever the case may be. I don't care how old he is. My grown kids get ready to leave the house. Tony said, where you going? <laughs> the what? They don't tell her, God. <laughs> they just give her that, you know, that I'm grown face. <laughs> but when she asks me where I'm going, I can't give her that I'm grown face. I give her that I'm married face. Well, I was just going to Wegman. So I was <laughs> <laughs> Come on, B, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, George, yeah, I'm grown, but I was just going to Wegmans. I'll be right back. <laughs> I might stop by Tim Hortons to get a cup of coffee. You want one? Can I bring you anything back? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> the scripture doesn't tell us the dialogue. The scripture doesn't tell us the conflict between, between Abraham and Sarah. Remember now, wherever there is value, there is what? Conflict. The scripture doesn't mention that at all. Probably would have added another five or six chapters to the book of Genesis. Because <laughs> you're not going to take that baby boy out of here. I, all these years, I was barren. Come on. All this time, and now you, you're going somewhere? And even as they journeyed, Isaac hey, said, Hey, where are we going, Dad? Never said we want to sacrifice, son. He said, I see it, because I, I see the wood. I, you know, I see the kindling. I see the wood. We, we got fire. I see that. He said, but I don't see a sacrifice. I don't see, I don't see a sacrifice. Hmm? You know, Abraham said, don't worry about it. Don't, don't, we good. We good. We good. Look at somebody say, the risk of embarrassment. I'm going to take my seat now. But they get to this place that's commonly known or referred to uh, in, in, in Jerusalem or just outside of Jerusalem, this place called Abraham's Ridge. And, and we, go, we go there every time, every time we go to, to Israel. 
we go to Abraham's Ridge, and from this cliff, this spot, you, you see down into, I believe it's the Kidron Valley, and you, you look beyond the valley, there's Jerusalem. Historically, it is believed that this is where Abraham was when he said to his servants, y'all stay here. Check the text now. And he says, I am the lad. We're going to go and we're going to worship. And we, come on, we're coming back. We're coming back. What was his command, though? Take the boy to the mountain, Mount Moriah. I'm going to show you where. Take him there and sacrifice him to me. But the need of a breakthrough says we're coming back. I'm going to obey God. And, and, and Abraham wasn't jumping and kicking and, 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 and shouting and carrying on. You know, I, I appreciate I love that song. You're a good, good father. But Abraham wasn't walking and singing, you're a good, good father through the Kidron Valley on the way to Mount Moriah. He was like, listen, really? You sure? You, and, and it's okay to ask God is it, if he's sure as long as you keep moving in the direction he told you to move in. Boy, I'm preaching so good. You just got to keep moving. Lord, listen, I don't even know where this is going to wind up. I don't know what it is you're trying to do, what you want to do. But listen, are you sure? And until I get an answer, I'm going to keep moving forward in the things of God. You can't stop. Isaac gets there and says, Dad, what's up? If, if we could put Isaac in a 21st century context. What are we doing? And I love this statement. Abraham gives a fight. He says, listen, we, 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 we got everything we need but a sacrifice. And he says, God himself will provide. He'll provide the land. Isaac and Abraham we see breakthrough. And the Bible says that there was a ram that got caught in the thicket under the, the ordained word of God right there at the right time. And for you and I, God has provided a lamb. St. John chapter number 1, I think it's verse number 29. The Bible says that John the Baptist sees Jesus coming towards him, and he makes the announcement to everybody around. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. He is the one. He is our breakthrough. He is our breakthrough. And breakthrough was not just for Jesus, but the scripture says that he represented the first fruit of many sons to come after him. It's, it's never just about you. Until you reconcile that, you can't have your breakthrough. 